Okay, this video is BS starts with the letter M. So first of all, meat diets. The people promoting meat, carnivore, low carb, paleo, keto, the whole Peterson family with their carnivore diet, nonsense. Um, that's all nonsense, just so people know. Nonsense gets big money behind it, gets promoted. They want the pros to be confused, okay? Somebody promoting that's not doing you a favor. Okay, then the Mediterranean diet. The Mediterranean diet is big crock of BS. It almost doesn't forbid anything except for processed food. Um, and fast food, but it's full of junk, alcohol, meat, uh, even allows some fried food and olive oil, canola oil. It's it's real high fat and stupid, okay? Um, and that's promoted by almost every single university hospital, except for the few that promote a keto diet. There's not a single university hospital or famous university uh, doctor that I'm aware of that promotes a low-fat vegan diet. Um, let's see, what else? And even most of the famous so-called vegans are promoting moderate fat diets, which I think is uh, not based on fact. Okay, the next thing is uh, moderation in diets. You know, we talked about this before, but it's hard to just eat a little bit of nuts, for example. Most people are going to eat too many. And, and McDougall talked about this plenty. He said he, he can't, you know, do something just a little bit. You, see, you have to be careful with that. Um, medications, most medications are a joke. They don't really work. Um, they're good for replacement. Like if you need thyroid hormone replacement, you take thyroid hormone and it'll work for that. Okay. There are some examples where it's useful. There are some examples where people tremendously benefit from antibiotics. I've seen people get their life saved by antibiotics, but most medicines are quite overrated. You know, like all these people think they need statins and all this other stuff when they could really just improve their diet. Okay, I see tons of people like that. I, I see smart people that work in the healthcare system that say stupid stuff like that. Okay, that they can't give up cooking oil, you know, and they get, mild, they get all kinds of problems. Okay, next thing is meditation. Now, meditation, I think, is a big joke and it's totally overrated. Now, I did have a pretty smart person who told me, oh, there are some smart people who benefit from meditation, but the examples they gave to me all seemed like fake examples. I'm just going to give you that as my opinion. Uh, meditation, a big part of where I think of meditation is there was a ruler, Ashok. He, like, conquered India, you know, back uh, in, like, 500 B.C., something like that, and he wanted everybody all of a sudden to convert to Buddhism and to meditate. It's a way to pacify people. You sit on your butt, you say om, you look at the wall. That doesn't lead to anything, okay? Like I said, i never seen a great person who say meditation really made a difference for them that was telling the truth about it. Okay, I think a lot of this push for meditation is because it's easy to say meditation. It doesn't imply any strong religious conviction. Buddhism, Hinduism, Confucianism, they're godless religions, okay? So there's no, there's no God involved. So people feel comfortable saying that. And I think the real goal of all this stuff is to try to de-Christianize the USA, de-Christianize the West. The reason is Christianity brings freedom, okay? Christianity brings some unity in the population. And when you get rid of it, you're going to see freedom fades away pretty fast. And what's the deal with multiculturalism? You hear multiculturalism, so all these things start with the letter M. Multiculturalism promoted, but they're not really trying to promote other cultures. If you read the book, you know, it was a good book, Closing of the American Mind. And that was, uh, I think the author's name was Alan Bloom. And what he basically said is <clears throat> multiculturalism is fake. The students don't really study other cultures. And if they were to study other cultures, what they find is that all cultures are highly ethnocentric. And he says that is for a reason. The countries have to promote <clears throat> their own thing, their own country, their own family, their own ways, because that gets them to like them, respect them, and maintain them. If they don't, if a population doesn't learn its history, then they have nothing to maintain. Culture and civilization are not genetically inherited. They're transmitted by education. So one of the big pushes in the public school system and the university system is to get rid of the true history, the true great history of the United States. The United States founding was the best founding of any country in the history of the world. Uh, the great men, the geniuses that founded the USA and tried to make it a free place, the brave good men. So that's being sort of covered up and hidden from people so they don't know it. I remember when I was growing up, they said, well, America's a melting pot. Everybody comes here and they become Americans. Teddy Roosevelt, we are all Americans. There's no hyphenated Americans. You know, um, e pluribus unum, out of many, we become one. You know, I, I, my father was from Ireland, my mother's from Puerto Rico. I never called myself a Puerto Rican American or an Irish American. I was just an American, okay? And that's what everybody was when I was a kid. Um, and I think what I think is the goal of all this stuff, hyphenating people's name. 
like I think they hyphenate the word African Americans to make people feel sorry for them brought here as slaves. You don't see them wanting to go back to Africa, okay? You don't see anybody. You see, everybody comes to the United States because they got more opportunity and chance here, at least they did in the past when the American dream was real. Um, what I think is happening is there's a push to disunify the population, to get everybody into little groups and to not have them not get along and to bicker and to kind of argue over, you know, uh, who can get more perks. And I think what's happening is this push for a lack of unity le can lead to strife. Strife leads to external authority and imposition of draconian rules. Okay, that's what I see happening and getting worse. We used to say the Pledge of Allegiance in school, one nation under God. Now they force all the schools to be atheistic. And the reason is you can deny the divinity of mankind and thus say that humans are just, you know, atheistic Darwinism, talking primates. You can take away all their rights. That's why it's happening. And I believe the real goal of multiculturalism never was to teach people about other cultures. Because I was never encouraged to really learn about any other culture in, in school or in college. Um, you know, I went to Stanford for undergraduate and we used to have <clears throat> Western Civ was a full one-year class. Okay, and we learned all about the ancient Greeks, the ancient Romans the Middle Ages, etc. The Renaissance it was, I think, a great class. One of my favorite classes I ever took. I learned a lot. And then um, <clears throat> Jesse Jackson came through um, Stanford with some uh, modernist protesters and they said, hey ho, Western Civ has got to go. But if you get rid of Western civilization, what do you have to replace it? What do you have to replace it? I haven't seen anything viable that's going to unify people, make people happy, and improve their lives, okay? You know, you know, Drag Queen Story Hour is not a good replacement for Western civilization, okay? I think it's just a temporary thing that's being done to further get rid of the West, okay? All cultures are not equal, okay? Not all cultures produce great art, produce great literature, produce great architecture, produce great science. Christianity has done that, you know, more than any other culture by far. And the goal of an atheistic system is, again, to push people towards having all their rights denied. Because talking monkeys don't get any rights. If, you're, if you are not uh, mankind creating the image of God, therefore part divine, then you go through atheistic Darwinism, and that says all people are simply, atheistic Darwinism takes over. It says all people simply are talking primates. They do not have a soul. There is no afterlife. There's nothing special about them. Their life has no meaning. They're simply like farm animals owned by a ruler. And... You know, that's where the USA is headed. That's a big step heading towards slavery. People in lousy countries used to go to the USA. You'd always say, well, if our country gets bad, we can go to the USA. Nowadays, all the Western countries are being destroyed. There's nowhere to go to. Where do you go? Um, you know, and then a couple other points. Low-fat vegans, what makes people healthy in comparison to this nonsense about this meat Mediterranean nonsense? Capitalism, laissez-faire, is the only thing that makes a good economy. Uh, Ayn Rand had said this. She was brilliant on economics. Atlas Shrugged was a you know, masterpiece of a book. Look at Milton Freeman, another genius, talking about the economy. And it just make it clear. Here's what he says. There is no alternative way so far discovered of improving the lot of ordinary people that can hold a candle to the productive activities that are unleashed by a free enterprise system. The essential notion of a capitalist society is voluntary cooperation. Voluntary cooperation. The essential notion of a so socialist society is force. That's what it comes down to. And, and this isn't just Milton Freeman and Ayn Rand. This is anybody who's honest and open and has actually studied the subject. It has to be laissez-faire capitalism. It can't be rigged capitalism. It has to be where, you know, everybody has a chance to give something a try, okay? And in Christian ethics, okay, which is sort of Bible-based ethics, man is created in the image of God, therefore part divine, love thy neighbor, forgive each other, give each other the benefit of the doubt, help each other, all that stuff leads to a society where people are as nice as they're ever going to be. Yeah, there's always going to be pettiness and stuff, but you'll be a million times better off than you would be in an atheistic Darwin society where they say might is right, <laughs> okay, and that's what you get. And look at the difference in the holidays, Thanksgiving holiday versus autumn break. Christmas holiday, the joy of the world, the light of the world, okay, versus winter break. Winter break is BS, all right? Easter holiday versus spring break. Now, you can scoff at these things, you can mock them, go all you want, but you can't, nobody can come up with a better way to replace them. You know, the Constitution, all the freedoms built into that. You want to throw that in the garbage can? We're screwed, okay? You want to say a country can be a country and not have uh, limits and margins and, you know, what borders? Uh, without that, you don't have a country. And, you know, the populations become so stupid, they can be talked into everything. So I'm sad to see it. I'm sad to see it. America used to be a great country, and now it's turning into a third world crap hole. And there's nowhere to go. You know, we're looking screwed. So I hope things are going to get better.